everybody. Welcome to another episode of Cribs and Ribs with Steve Wicket. Today we're going to make red wine braised short ribs. Now short ribs are a delicious dish. They've really started to gain some popularity over the last 15, 20 years or so. Really soft and tender and full of flavor. The short rib, it's the rib portion that actually comes from the, the chuck section of the beef, which is towards the upper front leg. But it's really tough, so you really want to cook it down slow and low to really make that nice and tender. A good short rib should be nice and marbleized. You can see this has got quite a bit of marbling. You want a nice meaty piece over the top of the bone. We're also going to take off this membrane from the bottom, which you can leave off if you really want to skip a step because there's really no meat under there that's preventing you to get to, but I would recommend taking it off. It really makes the whole thing nice and tender. And then also this thick layer of fat. There's a layer of silver skin just underneath that. You're going to want to take both of those off as well. To prepare this recipe, what you're going to need is some red wine. Now don't use anything great, don't overthink it. Matter of fact, if the wine is good enough to drink, don't cook with it, drink with it. Find the cheapest red wine you can find. I picked this one up at Smith's down there, it's usually like nine bucks, but it's on sale for four bucks. So uh, that's what we're gonna be using. You're also gonna want your favorite brand of balsamic, or your favorite brand of soy sauce. We're gonna use about a third of a can of that tomato paste right there, and some salt and pepper. Uh, veggie wise, you're gonna need couple of celery stalks, couple of carrots. You'll want a sprig of rosemary, a handful of garlic cloves, a bay leaf, and a couple of onions. And we're gonna cook that down in the pot after the, the beef has been browned. They call that a mirepoix. And that's like a base of flavor. It comes from French cooking, but really brings a lot of nice flavor to the dish. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. To get these short ribs ready, first thing we need to do, and I have to stress to you, you must use a sharp knife. Keep your knives nice and sharp. We're gonna slice off that layer of silver skin and fat right off the top. That's unpleasant to eat. No need to put that in our braise. Now be careful not to shave off too much of that edible beef, everybody. You wanna just get just that silver skin. You can see there's a little bit of it down here as well, and that layer of fat. All right. Also, you can use once you can grab a hold of that silver skin, you can use a, a paper towel to pull that right off as well. You take that little layer, that little corner of fat off there as well. Now a little fat on here isn't a problem at all, everybody. You just really wanna get that thick layer of fat uh, that was at the very top of the short rib off of there as well as the silver skin underneath. To get the uh, membrane off the bottom, if you're gonna go the extra mile there, what I do is I like to take a butter knife here, I slide it un right underneath the membrane on, on the bone, use that knife to pull up on the membrane, and then you can grab hold of that with your paper towel here. And as you can see, with a little bit of effort, this will come right off. There we go. All right, and that short rib's pretty much ready to go. I think I've got a little tiny bit of silver skin left there that I'm gonna wanna take off. There it is. Sometimes you just gotta slide that knife right underneath it. Cause again, the trick is you wanna get that silver skin off of there without uh, taking off any of that edible beef. And that silver skin, no matter how long you braise it for, that's not gonna be edible. So you definitely wanna take that off. Now that we've got our short ribs cleaned up here, it's time to go on ahead and season those. Gotta get one free hand here. We're just gonna do a little black pepper. You don't need to overthink this one, everybody. This is gonna get a lot of flavor from those aromatic vegetables that we chopped as well as the wine and the bay leaf, the rosemary. So you really don't need to overly season these things here. You just want to basically uh, do, hit them with salt and pepper all over. And I know the bottom's just the bone side, but we're actually going to get all six sides of these things. Now the ends, basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish putting salt and pepper on the, the whole short ribs here, and then I'm just going to dab up what fell off on the cutting board with the ends there. Two birds, you know? Now when you use 
Uh, your salt, I don't recommend using iodized salt, everybody. It just doesn't taste as good. I'm sure there's some sort of health explanations to which I'm not privy to, but I like using natural coarse ground sea salt. Just make sure you got a nice amount of salt and pepper on this. Anything left over, I'm gonna go ahead and just dump it right there on the cutting board because I'm gonna get my hands like this. And if you got a pile of it, you can kind of control how much of it you get on there. All right, everybody, so I've got the oven preset at 275. We've got our Dutch oven here, preheating, getting ready to brown these short ribs. And over here, we've got about two cuts worth, worth of beef broth that we're gonna need in order to, uh, to braise these short ribs here. So the first thing we're gonna do is start off with a little splash of vegetable oil. All right. As soon as you'll start to see a little bit of fumes start to rise from that Dutch oven, what you're gonna do at that point is go ahead and slide these short ribs in there. Now when you do, be careful not to overcrowd the short ribs. You don't want them touching each other. If you have to do this in two batches, then go ahead and do it in two batches. But I like to start with that nice meaty side down first. You might actually have to do one or two of them on the side in order to make room. Oops, be careful there. And we're gonna sear these on all six sides. So technically it doesn't really matter which one you do first. Each side, you're probably gonna be looking at about, yeah, about three or four minutes on each side really. Now it's important not to touch those short ribs while they're starting to sear. Just let them sit for that three to four minutes. Now you're gonna to start to see some sticky stuff start to form on the bottom of the pot, and that is all good, everybody. We're gonna cook that down. That's really gonna add a lot of flavor to your sauce. It's called fawn. But you don't want that fawn to burn. If you let that sit for too long, that fawn's gonna to start to cook and turn black. There's a couple different ways you can avoid that from happening. You wanna set the short ribs down where they were the first time, and that'll kind of keep it from burning some, and then also you can go with onions. And once we get to that point, I'll show you a little bit more. You'll start to smell the sweetness of, of brown meat, and that's when you're going to really know when it's time to turn it. Not as soon as you smell it, but give it a minute. Give it a minute to caramelize on the outside there. That's what you want it to look like on each side before we put it into the oven. So now I'll go ahead and just rearrange this. I'm going to set them down in the same place as much as possible so that I don't burn my fawn. If these will stick on you to the pot, don't force it up. If they stick, go ahead and get a spatula and, and, uh, and loosen that up some. As you can see, some of the stuff starting to form on the bottom. Keep an eye out, everybody. You don't want that to turn into uh, any charcoal or anything for you. So we're going to toast these on all sides. If you notice this start to get black, we're going to go ahead and toss in a handful of those diced onions. And the diced onions will preserve that fawn and keep it from burning. A little tip. That one's free of charge. While these are searing, let's go ahead and do this and open up this wine. Madame, I've got the 2020 Red Blend from Aconga. I'm sure this is like New Mexico's finest or something. No, this actually came from Mendoza. All right, we'll see what we got here. Ooh, this is already incredibly aromatic. Mmm, an artificial cork. Fantastico. Again, if it's good enough to drink, don't cook with it, everybody, but let's see what we're working with. Anyway. not good enough to drink in the slightest bit. Aconga, Smith's Finest, on sale for half price, everybody, now you know why. It is ridiculous, I'm not tasting that. You might be sitting at home talking about, oh, I like Aconga. I like wine that smells like somebody's feet. Delicious. That is some horrible smelling wine. I can't imagine it's gonna get any better when I put it in my mouth. All right, these are on the last side. So at this point, we're just gonna transfer these over to the plate. I'm gonna get those aromatic vegetables, starting with the onions. 
And we're gonna brown those onions, add in the carrots and celery and garlic, and then deglaze this pan. So let's go onion first, everybody. Best we can. If we get a little bit of celery or anything in there, I'm not gonna freak out. But the onions, you really wanna cook those down for a while. There's a lot of sugar, believe it or not, in onions. And you wanna cook those down for a while and let all that sugar caramelize. And that's really gonna be a big part of the base of the plate. We're probably gonna cook these onions for about five minutes or so before we add the garlic. I'm gonna speed this up for you, everybody. Also, if you didn't, if you haven't uh, tried it before, you can use an onion to clean your barbecue grill as well. You just got to get that barbecue grill nice and hot, slice an onion in half, and if you rub it on the grill, it'll take a, a lot of that black crap right off of there. All right, I'm really starting to be able to smell these onions. So go ahead and toss in the garlic, and you can throw those in whole. But it's going to take anywhere from three and a half to five hours, and in that amount of time, that garlic and all the flavor is going to be zapped right out of it, and it's going to be incorporated into the sauce as it should be. And we're gonna just keep sauteing this until that uh, garlic starts to get a little fragrant and we can notice the smell there. That's gonna take, uh, that'll, that'll probably take about another four or five minutes. Let's go ahead and add the carrots and celery. We'll go ahead and toss those in and continue to saute. At this point, we want some of that fun on the, on the bottom of the pan. We want some burnt up brown bits. But as you can see, the onions have pretty much cleaned all that off. So whatever shall we do? Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to cook these. I'm, right now, I'm sitting on about nine. We're going to cook these about halfway on the carrots and celery there. And then I'm going to crank up that heat all the way and really uh, let this start to caramelize. And as that caramelizes, you let it sit for a while, and we'll develop some more fun on the bottom of the pan then. you got to have a little patience, everybody. Cooking is definitely the labor of love. And the long part hasn't even begun yet. I just cranked this up as high as it'll go. I want it to be as hot as possible so we can start to get those sugars to caramelize. Hopefully get a little more fun on the bottom of the pot here. But those caramelized sugars are part of the key of, of developing your flavor. See that? You can start to see some of that brown starting to form on the, uh, on the onions there. And some of that fawn starting to form on the bottom of that Dutch oven, that's exactly what we want. Ooh, this is gonna be good, everybody. Everybody, my embarrassment, I almost missed a vital ingredient. We gotta put about a third of a can of this tomato paste in there. You wanna add that tomato paste in before you deglaze the pan while the onions are cooking. And it's important you let that tomato paste go for a little while. Because as that cooks, that's going to take that canned flavor off of the tomato paste. And that works for a lot of canned ingredients, by the way. If you cook it for a little bit, that canned flavor just kind of alleviates some. But these, uh, this tomato paste is going to make the sauce nice and rich. It's also going to add some more sugar to this hot pan here so that we can hopefully caramelize and get some complexity of flavor. Now, ideally, I would have liked to have remembered what I was doing here with the tomato paste and put that in just a little bit earlier, but we're still good. And I can see it starting to burn onto the bottom of that pan. We're getting close to needing that wine in there. We don't want that to burn, burn. We don't want it to turn black. No char, just caramelize. If you get char on your food, it's going to taste like char. If you get caramelized goodness on your food, it's going to taste like caramelized goodness. I am starting to get a little dark that I'm gonna worry about it right in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this wine in now. So we're gonna have basically what would be the equivalent of a full glass of wine. So you're looking at between a quarter to a, yeah, about a quarter of the bottle there. I was gonna go a bit more. Love that red wine flavor. Now pay attention to the liquid level here, everybody, because you're really going to want that to come down some. You can tell what uh, when the alcohol is cooking off and when it's not by the size of the bubbles. 
as you can see, we've got tiny little bubbles just kind of shimmering at the top of the layer, at, at the top of the liquid there. We're putting a little more here, so we, just so you can see that better. When those bubbles are really tiny and fast, not like it's boiling, but just tiny, fast little bubbles like that, that's the alcohol cooking off. So when those fast little bubbles stop, and it starts to look more like normally simmering food, uh, it's, it, the alcohol's out of there and you're ready to proceed. So now we're gonna go ahead and add in the beef broth, which I happen to have conveniently sitting right here. We're gonna throw in the rosemary and the bay leaf. We're gonna use a, eh, probably about an eighth of a cup of the uh, balsamic, about an ounce. And just a little splash of soy sauce. So we're just going to kind of let this simmer together, let that flavor sort of develop together. Uh, at that point, we're going to toss in those short ribs and, and put it in the oven. Oh man, that smells terrific. And everybody, one tip that I've got to give you for cooking, if you, and I'm sure you already do this, but taste everything. You know, don't just follow the recipe and say, okay, it's good and throw it in the oven. Let's taste it and see what it needs. Okay, we could use a little more black pepper on this. We're gonna use a little bit more soy sauce because it needs a little more, needs a touch more salt. And after, uh, we get the sauce concocted. Soy sauce is the best way to bring a little extra sodium there. And it also needs a little bit of brightness. I don't want to use any more balsamic because balsamic is more of a rich, almost almost has like a mock sweet sort of a flavor. I want something that's really going to bring some brightness. So I've got just the thing. This is a white wine vinegar that I picked up down there at Smith's over there on Aliante. And this is actually, you know, got quite a bit of pep to it. We just need a touch. Mm. That's good. I think we're going to go ahead and toss those short ribs in. Let's see, the lightest side is going to be that side right there, actually. As you can see, just as I was saying, just a little bit of those short ribs is poking over the top. That's exactly how this needs to look when you pop it in the oven. You want to put this on the rack that's just below the middle rack. One below the middle. Again, your oven's going to be set at 275. I'm thinking this is probably going to take about four, four and a half hours. But I'm going to start checking it at about three and a half hours. So now these short ribs have been in the oven for almost five hours. I can smell them cooking and I highly suspect they're gonna be about ready. So to check those, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a knife and just poke down on the top of the short ribs and there should be no resistance at all. It should be nice and buttery soft. Oh, beautiful. Yep, look at that. This just pokes right through. These are done, everybody. Perfectly done. Let's take a look at these short ribs, everybody. You can see these are unbelievably tender and moist. These are about to fall right apart. We'll let this cool off for a little bit and we'll give it a taste. Now this is a very rustic dish, everybody. To plate this whole thing, you don't need to go crazy. You can serve this over polenta if you like, mashed potatoes, a little bit of butter pasta if you like. What we're gonna do though, just to kind of serve it plain and show you how I would plate it, just put a little spoonful right in the middle of the plate there. All right, push it down with it spoon so it spreads out a little bit. Don't swoosh it around on the plate or nothing. At that point, we'll add a bone and a short rib. And that right there is how you make a red wine braised beef short rib. Let's give this a taste. This is gonna be a fantastic dish. So we're not even gonna really need our knife here. I'm just gonna take the fork and show you just how tender this short rib is. You can see it comes right apart. Right. Oh man, look at that. 
Mm. The smell is outstanding. The texture looks perfect. Look at that, everybody. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. <laughs> so nice. You know, a dish like this with the whole braising process really, really allows that beef to shine through on its own. And keep in mind, this is normally a really tough, di uh, really tough piece of meat. But through that slow braising process, we slowly start to break down those proteins and really make it nice and flavorful. Mmm. The sauce here just accents the flavor that already has been infused into the beef. Again, look at that. This will impress. Another suggestion I would make for this is you could serve that with a horseradish cream. Dynamite. Mm. You can taste those caramelized onions, a little bit of the carrot, you know, really gives it a little bit of snap. And that white wine vinegar definitely added a little bit of much needed brightness to that dish. Really delicious, everyone. I hope you enjoy it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell because you don't want to miss anything spicy.